Are you a good listener? I said, are you a good listener? So what do you think? Are you a good listener? Do I make myself clear? I'm sorry I wasn't listening. How you answer that question is critical. Your actions and behaviors are always consistent with the way you see yourself. So when I ask, are you a good listener? It makes no sense to answer that question in any other way other than absolutely. So you want to start by convincing yourself that this is a skill set. It's not some innate trait that you were born with. It is something that you can develop. But is it? Is listening something that you do, or is it something that you are? Whoa, that's deep. Now look, it all starts with the belief, your belief, and that you can control. But when you get past the belief, there is then the skill set, and you can control that as well. Let me give you a hint on this. Don't do this for you, and certainly not for me. Just ask yourself, how much does your customer appreciate a good listener? Don't you have to say anything for yourself? Are you even listening? Sorry, did you say something? I'm sorry, no, I'm talking to someone on the oh, phone. Okay. Hello? Now look, I don't need to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Listening equals caring. That's right, in your customer's mind, Listening equals caring. So do you know what that means? It means that partial listening means partial caring. And in sales, that is inexcusable. Now look, you know you're not supposed to interrupt and you know you're supposed to feed back to your customer what you are hearing, but let me offer you some less obvious but very important tips. These are my five less obvious but very important listening tips. Tip number one, maintain eye contact. It might look something like this. I want to reward you with five minutes of uninterrupted eye contact. Yay. Okay, maybe not quite that intense. You need to understand that you listen with your eyes and not just your ears. You see, eye contact allows you to listen between the lines. It's not just what's being said, it's what's being conveyed. And the small but important details are often missed when we aren't watching carefully. All right, here's my second tip. Default to tell me more. What I mean by that is, I don't care what your customer is talking about, your default mechanism should be to say, tell me more. Tell me more about that. Why? Because the message is usually not found on the surface. Oftentimes customers don't fully share with you until they believe that you care. It's not the first thing that they say or even the second. Sometimes it's the third thing that they say. So if I get into this habit, tell me more, it makes all the difference in the world. Here's a third tip. Listen for the motivation. Now they might say, I want this, or I need that. That's important, but it's incomplete information. If you don't understand the why, you don't understand your customer. So there's a simple technique in the form of a one-word question. Why? Get into the habit of asking for that important clarification. I want this. Why? I need this. Why? You want to get down to the level of the motivation. Here's a fourth tip, listen for the emotion. You see, people don't make a move or buy something because of their dissatisfaction. They make a move or buy something because of the emotion behind that dissatisfaction. We are emotionally driven creatures and we need to satisfy that. So if you're not sure about the emotion, here's my suggestion, ask. The question, how are you feeling about that, is really important and really impactful. And here's my fifth tip for effective listening. Thank them for sharing. 
it's classy to be able to say to somebody, boy, that, that's really helpful. Thank you so much for sharing with me on that. It's a nice little move that affirms you're paying attention, that affirms it means something, and that causes your customer to open up all the more. Listen up, sales pros. No, really, listen up. Learn how to listen. Because when you learn more, you earn more.